about her giving up her job on the paper. In a moment of youthful understanding, she looked inward and found humility. Uh, she was self-conscious about her lack of experience. What kind of person committed this action? As an editor, I am prone to say a lesion on the body politic, but as a man, I'm forced to admit that it was probably a fundamentally decent person momentarily afraid. As Allison herself observed, the human being is forced to choose. We also know that every choice has its consequences, and choosing to remain silent is no exception. I wonder how many of us can survive the burden this kind of silence imposes. Like Allison Seawall, I'm no oracle, but I've learned that harboring guilt can only lead to the erosion of a man's soul. Well, what do you think? Think I'm going off half-cocked? I wish I'd written it myself. But if this man has remained silent this long, do you think that'll change his mind? Uh, I don't know. Well, that doesn't relieve us of the responsibility of trying. No, it doesn't, but even if he does come forward, what would that accomplish? I'll tell you what it'll accomplish. I don't want the person that hit Allison to enjoy the luxury of remembering her just as a shadow on a road, as a faceless, nameless moment. Because you can forget a shadow, but you... You can't forget a girl that's that much alive. No, you can't. Elliot, I know this has been said many times, but if there's anything at all that I can do, please call me. Well, it can't be said too often. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I haven't seen her look like this since she was a child. Face is so untroubled. Johnny. There's so much going on underneath, isn't there? Pressure building up. Possible bleeding. We fear those things, but there's no evidence of that happening now. Strange. Her face is so peaceful. Johnny, look at me. No, this has nothing to do with Alice, and I spoke to Dr. Morton. Now, it's not a breach of professional etiquette. Allison, this is my case. I wanted to know why you went to see him the other day, if it was routine. It was much more than routine. I walked into his office with my fingers crossed, hoping I was pregnant. He asked you to wait till next week to take the test. Are you still hoping? Oh, yes, Michael. Well, not in the same way. Life was so different that day. Allison was well, and Elliot was starting a new career. But even after the accident, sitting around in this room, I, I've known that I, I'd want this baby. Did you tell Elliot? No, not yet. I, I wanted to be sure. He could share the waiting. And if I'm not pregnant, he could also share the disappointment. I couldn't do that to him, Michael. Not now. All right. I'll keep my fingers crossed.
that was Sunday a week? No, there's nothing on the calendar, but I'll have to check with John. Yes, terribly busy with the trial. No, he hasn't. But if he did, I couldn't tell you anyway. Wives of district attorneys just don't gossip. They take an oath. Yes, thank you for thinking of us. I'll call you tomorrow. All right, goodbye then. John, I didn't hear you come in. I know. You do me much credit. Thank you. Nancy Ogden called, and she wants us for dinner. A week from Sunday. Look, there's time. Before you say yes, let's see how things go. All right. But you've been eavesdropping. No, just admiring. I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint you if you've come home for lunch. It's one of my lady's auxiliary days at the hospital. Yes, I hadn't forgotten. But you came anyway? On an impulse to admire my beautiful wife for a moment before she left. You must have a better reason. Now, what better reason could there be? A more practical one. Well, there you've got me. I misplaced my reading glasses. I hope somewhere around the house. You left them on your nightstand. If you called me, I would have dropped them by on my way to the hospital. Did call earlier. You weren't here. Oh. I went to a summer sale at White River. Oh, what bargains proved irresistible this time? I didn't get a chance to buy anything. By the time I got there, I'd realized I'd forgotten my uniform. So I had to come all the way home for it. Oh, surely you have such a perfect record, you could skip one day at the hospital. I hate to disappoint the children. They seem to miss me. You miss them? Larry and we're young, other couples. I know. Maybe we can get away for a long weekend soon. Before the Harrington case is completed? Well, you never know. We're in pretty good shape. You've worked so hard. It's a complicated case. Because of your father? No. I'm determined to keep my personal feelings out of this. You know that. Supposing you realized that your personal feelings were involved. And that for some reason you couldn't remain completely objective. For some reason? Still meaning my father? Oh, you're wrong, Marion. If I became that involved, I'd disqualify myself and let justice take its course. And let justice take its course. Well, why do you repeat that? I don't know. It just seems so grim. I'm late. I better go. Thank you. Goodbye. You read about the Mackenzie girl? Yes. The newspaper said it was hit and run. Hmm. Um, have the police found out any more? Oh, they're investigating. I suppose they don't have much to go on. Next to nothing. Well, they won't give up. No, don't worry, they won't. Goodbye.
preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. I'm now of the opinion that it might be a mistake to try for bail. Well, I think I have the right to know why, Mr. Harrington. Small phrases to disguise the truth. The medical truth. Allison's condition is critical. Why not try to make it easier on both of us? Because I don't intend to disappear for you or for anyone else. Thank you.